All right, everybody, welcome to Unscripted. And today we just announced from my very soon studios here in Hilliard, Ohio, uh, not there just quite yet, but we will be broadcasting from the junction in Old Hilliard. And I'm real excited about that. But honestly, I'm much more excited about uh, today's guest. So um, let me go ahead and read a little bit of the bio and then and then I really want you to tell your story. So um, just just to, to start off on the bio right off the top, um, what an honor today to have Major Retired Terrence Ty Manns. Uh, he enlisted in the U.S. Army in 1980. In 1987, he was accepted in the Army Army ROTC program at Wright State University, right here in beautiful Dayton, Ohio. Okay, Ohio. <laughs> in 1989, he graduated and was commissioned Second Lieutenant Infantry Regular Army. Uh, Ty served as an Army Infantry Officer in tactical assignments in Germany, Korea, and worldwide from 1989 to 2003. I'm gonna pause it right there and just go ahead and say, cause I, there's a lot in your bio that I want you to really tell because I wanna make sure we get it right. But man, let me let me just pause right there and say from my family uh, to you, thank you. Thank you for your service, um, for your family's service. You are, your family is military and uh, there is no greater uh, respect than I have for those that have served and and allow me to get on a little podcast and do whatever I want in this country. So thank you. Um, thank before you so we get much. anything else, I really wanted to, to sincerely thank you for your service. Appreciate that. With that, let me turn it over to you, man. Why don't you fill in the rest of the gaps for us and we'll get into uh, my brother's keeper. But why don't you tell us a little bit about you, Ty? Yeah, well, you know, uh, I'm, I grew up in a, in a small town in West Virginia. Uh, that's why I I still love West Virginia to this day. <laughs> Rocking the Mountaineers, love it. Rocking my Mountaineers, you know, you can you can take me out of there, but I'm still a West Virginia kid. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I grew up in a coal mine in town in West Virginia. My dad was a coal miner. Uh, everybody around that area at that time in the '60s, '70s, you know, they were all coal miners. And uh, you know, I joined the military uh, to really kind of escape. I wanted to leave West Virginia and see the world. I had an older brother that was already in the military and I just said, hey, I'm, I'm going to do what he's doing. And it turned out to be 24 years later. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know, wow. I, 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 I'll be honest, it wasn't planned that way. It was like, okay, I'm going to go out and go into the world, spend a couple years in the military, go to college. But uh, man, I just fell in love with the military. I fell in love with everything that it offered serving the country and I just you know, I just kept wanting to go further and further and it led to like you said in the bio uh, found myself seven years later being offered an opportunity to go to college and finish my degree and I jumped on it I, mean, I, I was that's that was the whole plan from the beginning and I said well yeah okay I'll, I'll take that and um, believe it or not when I went to college I I was going to sign up to only go back into the guard so I could study film. Uh, my plan was I was gonna go out to California and be this big time movie star and make all these great movies in uh, 89 when I graduated and I just couldn't do it. The, mm. the day before I was school, you know, well school, a few days before school started, but a day before we at RTC had to make our selections and make it final what we wanted to do. I went into my colonel's office and said, hey, I can't do this. I, I want to go back on active duty. You know, I want to be an infantryman. I want to change everything. And, and he let me and the rest is history. You know, I, I did. And I'm so grateful that I did that. It was the best decision that I ever made. Uh, being an infantry officer was one of the, just one of the greatest times of my life. And it led me to my wife and now my boys. So no regrets, none. And, you know, after I got out of the military, I uh, played around in corporate world for a while. And now here I am the last, I think, eight years I've been, I uh, started this company and here we are. There you are. So well, you know, we, we, we stand on the shoulders of, of your decision to go back into the military and your family's decision. And again, I, I have the ultimate respect for that. I myself did not serve in the military. Um, my dad was in the Navy. And, um, you know, I, again, I just I have so much respect for those that allow us to have freedoms like we do. And, and um, you know, there's there's no greater honor, I don't think, that, than to serve this country. Uh, and so thank you. Thank you, honestly, for that. So. Um, with that, man, let's transition because you yeah. are in a different realm now and we're here today 
to talk about my brother's keeper and what a film, what a film that was. Before we get into too much, man, I got to say this right off the jump. Uh, I want to see Jesus, Pastor McClinton, class, Pastor Clinton McFarland. Can we talk about that for a minute? Like, we're gonna song, see, right? Did he bring the house down? Oh man, let me tell you that. What you know, it was funny because I met him at a screening uh, for a, a question of faith, which was the movie I wrote. And his church did a private screening. You know, they're from Atlanta, uh, yep. about an hour and a half down the road, up the road. And um, he was. We were talking afterwards. And he started telling me about his music. Mm. And I said, well, you know, I'm getting ready to start work on this next film. And we are looking for music. I'm always out there. And a few days later, he sent me all the tracks. And I'm laying in bed. My wife was already asleep. I've been down here in my office working. I go upstairs, stick my headsets in. And I'm just sitting there listening to the music. And that song came on about the third or fourth one in the track. Ooh. And I just straight up in the bed. Uh-huh, right. Wife up. She's like, what are you doing? I'm like, you just saw that you got to... Uh, I'm trying to, you know, pull him up, trying to stick it in her ear. She's like, leave me alone. But man, I mean, from the moment he started singing that song, I mm. said, that's the title track right there. That's it. That's and it, and, and we'll talk about the movie, but man, it hit, it hit different in the movie. Yeah. And I'm telling you, I've had it on rotation for about three or four days. And every time I go to church, <laughs> and he took yeah. us to church and, and I told my family yesterday, we have a little family group text that, that we all keep in touch. I mean, they're all in the same house, but I got my son's off in college, but, but uh, I sent it to them and I was like, y'all we're going to church. Listen to this. Yeah. And, and yeah. Whew, man, he got it. He got it. So, oh man, so good. So good. And I know it has nothing to do with the movie and maybe it has a little bit, but, but no, a lot to do with it because I mean, you're right. When you hear that song, mm. even in the trailer, it's like, whoa, who's singing mm-hmm. this song? And yeah. I listen to it all the time. I, I, I'm blessed to have all the songs on that track, on that album. But man, I mean, that song just blew me away. Yeah, yeah. I mean, big moment in the movie. And I don't want we, no, no, no spoilers. No spoilers. We want people right, to see right. it. But big <laughs> moment in the movie. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie, man. I had a little tear rolling down my face because uh, he took us to church, and it was a powerful moment in the movie. So let, let's let's get right to the movie because that's uh, a big part of our our thing today. Uh, first of all, the cast, I mean, let's talk about the cast and I'm just going to read these off real quick for anybody listening. Uh, so the movie's called my brother's keeper. Let's start there. The movie called my brother's keeper comes out March 19th, March 19th, March 19th. Okay. So we're coming out March 19th. How's that going to come out because of COVID and all those things. So anybody listening, how are they going to be able to find my brother's keeper on March 19th? It will be out in theaters. Okay. So you, uh, if you go to mbkfilm.com, which is the website, My Brother's Keeper, or mbkfilm.com, you can register there and they will be sending out as it gets closer which theaters will have the movie. Right now, we believe we're going to be anywhere between 200 to 300 theaters across the U.S. Wow. Uh, so, you know, our thing is we understand COVID and we mm-hmm. want people to be safe. We're praying for you to be safe. But if you, if, you know, if you want to go see a, what we think is a very lovely Christmas, uh, Christmas, uh, Christian, Christian movie, mm-hmm. uh, just be safe and go see it. And yeah. so, uh, if, but mbkfilm.com, that's where they can find out where the theaters will be. mbkfilm.com, did I say that right? And I'm going to have all this in the blog post when I put everything up online. So anybody listening, but M is in my brother's keeper, mbk film.com so that's that's all right so that's good to know so that's how you can find the film but let, let me just run down this this lineup yeah, because yeah. unbelievable uh yeah. joey lawrence from blossom and melissa and joey fame tc stallings who was in war room courageous former professional athlete and man that that guy's put together yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm not gonna lie ty i was watching the movie i'm like man I need to go yeah. work out because this guy's making me feel real bad. He is put right. together. He is he is built. Yeah. Um, Keisha Knight and, and Pullian. Am I saying it right? Pullian. 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 Keisha yeah. Knight Pullian, who most people will know from Cosby fame. My right. my wife, as we were watching the movie, said that's that girl from Cosby. So uh, right. Keisha Knight uh, Pullian, Greg Allen Williams, who may not that that name may not sound familiar, but anybody who sees him will know right away. He was in Baywatch, Necessary Roughness, in the Line of Fire, and I think a lot of people remember him as one of the coaches from Remember the Titans. And that's just that's just four right off the top. I mean, this is a star-filled cast. 
fantastic yeah. cast and uh really really did a nice job in in the film yeah. uh and especially pop pop was great i, I loved oh, his yeah. role yeah. i loved uh the whole thing he really did great so what was it like putting that cast together you know it's uh it's a blessing i i, yeah. I, I gotta tell you for uh, a, for me as a writer to look out and see uh that lineup of, of talent reading words that you put on paper is just I just I thank God every day for it. Yeah. Uh, but you know, it was great because TC was in a question of faith. So it was Greg. Mm -hmm. So TC and I was actually out one day by the craft table when we were filming a question of faith. And we we're just talking. First time I've ever met him. We just met at the craft table that day. And um, you know, I told him, I said, man, I really like your acting. You you're good, man. You're very yeah. good. And uh, I see, you know, I got this movie I want to write and uh we talked a little bit about it and he said well all right if you write it let me know mm. and a month later I sent him the draft and he read it and was like I, you know I gotta play this part I gotta yeah. do it and Greg of course again he worked on a question of faith and he had told me hey if you ever do anything else let me know I like your writing so you know, I called him up one day and told him about this sent him the script same reply hey I want to do this. And it just started, you know, started rolling, you know, unstoppable at that point. Keisha got it, loved it. Robert Richard was sitting in a coffee shop in LA when my business partner bumped into him and told him about the movie, sent him the script. He loved it. So, I mean, Joey, uh, Jeff Rose, it, it just kept going on and building and building. And before you know it, we were, I remember the day when we were sitting in the production office here in Columbus, Georgia, when we did the film. And we had all the pictures of the people who had agreed to do the movie up there. And uh, Kevin Otto and I were sitting at the director and we just looked at each other and Kevin said, that's a really good cast. Yeah. <laughs> he said, you'll get a theatrical release with that cast. Yeah. And here we are uh, a yeah. few weeks away from that. But I, I gotta tell you, they just did a great job. I can't wait for people to see the synergy between Greg and Robert Richard, the relationship between TC and Robert Richard's character, TC and Keisha's character. You got mm -hmm. all these many relationships happening in that movie that uh, I just think people are just going to enjoy. Yeah, and I didn't even mention Robert. He was fantastic. And, and was But it all great. kind of centered around TC. I mean, TC yeah. yeah. was the um, the backbone, in my opinion, to the, to the oh, movie. Yeah. His, his role, his, and how he embraced it and made it so believable. Yeah, um yeah. he really really did a good job and everybody else really played off of him he was fantastic yeah it's his story isn't it it's travis's yeah. story yeah and um you know tc you like said he just grabbed it mm -hmm. he just embraced it and and there were times he would walk over and say hey so should i do it like this or do it like this to me because this story is is kind of based in my father's experience coming home from vietnam with right. ptsd so he would come ask me questions like that, then he would just go back and just nail it. I and mean, there was a, the, 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 and you've seen the movie, uh, the scene where he's yelling at the pastor. Mm -hmm. uh, I had to leave because I remembered that day and he wow. was doing it so well. Mm -hmm. And I just walked down the street and everybody like, where, where, where did he go? And I finally came back and they said, what happened? I said, I couldn't watch it again. Mm -hmm. and I remember being that 10 year old boy when that happened. That's how he, that's how great and how close he was to that, you know, that actual event that day. What beautiful chaos for you as an as a director to to have lived that to to see it play out so hard yeah. for you personally, but to know that this is this I this this guy got it. This guy did it right. Yeah. He's going yeah. to bring it to the audience like I I I lived it. And and again, it's a tough thing to live. I'm glad you brought it up because I saw you on another interview and you mentioned this this statistic. Uh, and it's a tough statistic, but 22 service personnel each day commit suicide. Yeah, yeah. From PTSD yeah. or or possibly other issues. That's Man, right. that that's that's hard that's to a big hear. number, isn't it? That's, that's a, a big hard. Number. That's hard to hear. Yeah, yeah, it mm. is. And, I, and you know, without naming their names, but uh, I've had two soldiers from my command who are no longer with us because of that. Mm. And uh, you know, it gets tough. It gets tough. Uh, one of them's. Uh, anniversary of his death was just two days ago mm. and every year he's been gone now eight years but every year on that day it 
it grabs me. Yeah. I'm, I'm working my way, you know, out of this funk all day. It's like, okay, I, I got to get to work, but it's tough because you, you know, you see pictures of them. And of course with social media, people pop things up. So you're, you're constantly reminded, but um, there are a lot of people out there like me that, that have lost loved ones because of this horrible mental illness. Yeah. Well, I'm so thankful that you put this together and it is, it, it's hard, especially for those of us on the sideline who have not served to understand. And I think, I think TC and, and, and your writing and your directing did a good job of immersing us into what that may be like. Um, and yeah. so, and I, and maybe we jumped too far ahead because anybody listening to this understand. So there's a film called my brother's keeper. Uh, and it is about a, a military, um, and maybe I, maybe I should have you, you're the director, maybe you should explain it better. But um, my, my viewing of it was it, it's a, a man returning home um, from, from military because of the death of someone in his, his uh, unit. I believe I'm saying that correctly. Um, and, you know, it's, it's him trying to, one, adapt to being home and, yeah. two, uh, dealing with PTSD. And, and at one point, he's in the grocery store parking lot and somebody yeah. smashes a couple of carts together. And just that noise alone sends him, it's triggers, it's triggering to yeah. him. Yeah. And yeah. Um, we get to see that unfold with just an incredible actor named T.C. Stalling. So I apologize. I probably should put this at the beginning of the conversation. <laughs> but, but, but for anybody listening, that's kind of what we're talking about. Great film, um, powerful film about, um, about healing and uh, friendship, both past and new friendships. Um, and, and I hope I'm giving this justice, uh, Ty. Oh, yeah. no, you're, you're, right right you're right on. Yeah, I, the only, and I'll make one correction is I didn't direct this movie. Okay. Uh, my friend Kevin Otto, who directed A Question of Faith, uh, I asked Kevin to come in and direct this one. And, and in part because, one, Kevin, I think, is a great director. And he, he and I, he's also a former infantryman. So we, we got along great and we get along great. But two is because what you said, I, I think I was too close to it. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I needed that bit of separation, you know, uh, writing it was fine, executive producing it was great. But when I, when I started thinking about it, I was like, do I really want, is this the one movie I want to direct? Yeah. And I decided, no, I probably need to back off it a little bit. Uh, and I'm glad I did because Kevin did a great job. As you yeah. he, did, you know, he did a great job. All right. We, uh, real quick, back to Unscripted here. We had a little bit. Welcome to the world of Unscripted and technology. Uh, we were speaking of Jeff Rose when we froze up there and uh, uh, his role as pastor in the movie. And, and, and he was really, really fantastic. I think that's what we were talking about was just how great he was. He really reminded me of any pastor I've ever had. And he played his role really, really well. Um, I truly believed he was a pastor. Um, so he, yeah, he's fantastic. He's again, every, every, every person you had in their role played their role so well, just yeah. so well, it was great. Um, so let me ask you this because we talked about PTSD and I know that's near and, and dear to your heart as a part of why you wrote this film. What can the church do? And this is one of the questions that I received. Um, how can the church help with PTSD? Because I know we see it in the film, but you know this is this is a difficult thing because none of us, you know, most people have. As I said, I I was on the sideline. My, I'm thankful for our military. What can we do in a world we don't understand? How can we help? Yeah, you know that's a good question. Um, and I always, you know, you see some churches they do have military ministries, but it's it's walking on the eggshells. It really is because. I believe there are churches that would love to do it, but or maybe afraid to do it because of maybe some liabilities associated with it. Uh, or maybe they think they need to do too much. But I, I will say this, and I, and I tell this story, and I've told it many, many times before, that when my father was struggling with it, uh, my mom was leaving him. She packed us up, and we had gone to our grandmother's. And he came a few days later, and they had a conversation. My grandmother suggested that they go talk to the pastor and get counsel. Because you know, we're, we're a poor West Virginia coal mining family. You couldn't afford professional counseling, mm -hmm. but they did. They went to the church <clears throat> and that led to my father becoming a deacon and becoming a minister and, on the, and eventually he became a pastor and pastored his own churches. 
but it was the fact that that one person at that church was just willing to sit and listen to him. And, uh, and sometimes that's, sometimes that's all you need. Mm. Uh, the, I'm not saying that the people at the church will be the professional answer to, the, to healing. I'm not saying that. They will be the spiritual answer to healing. But for my family, it was a bridge. You know what I mean? It was this, this person who was a good man, but struggling with this horrible illness that didn't know how to get over this gap. And that, you know, going talking to that pastor uh, allowed that bridge to be built. And on the other side was salvation and healing for him. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, so I think for churches, is if you think you have that or just maybe just have people that are willing to sit and just listen. Mm. And that, that could be that bridge to get them to wherever it is they need to be next. Whether that's to see uh, you know, a professional, uh, medical treatment, which I believe you should seek, but you just, just maybe need to be that bridge yeah. and that, that could save a life. Who knows? Yeah. And we see that in the film, not to not spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Spoiler yeah. alert. No, I, it, it was it was amazing to see how the church stepped up in that role. What other resources are available for people? You, you may or may not know this. What, what are what are resources are available for people struggling with PTSD? Well, you know, for the veterans, there are um, like for me, I'm not struggling with PTSD, but if I were, I could go right out here to the army base. They have services there for soldiers. The VA has services, um, you know, professional counseling in town. Uh, I, I don't want to qualify myself because I'm not qualified sure. to do that, but there are services out there and there are people out there. There are even hotlines that you can pick up and call. And I believe that, the first step to completing that bridge is finding someone to talk to, whether it's a hotline or a VA appointment or whatever that case may be. Uh, it all starts there. And that's the hardest part because I'm at least what I'm, again, I'm not qualifying myself or speaking about anyone else, but for my dad, we watched him suffer this for, you know, for a bit of time, knowing that, now, knowing now that all he had to do is walk through that church door. Mm. So the hardest part is getting that first step to be taken. Sure. And and then once that happens, then many like my father find that redemption there and, and that healing there. And, uh, you know, my dad eventually saw professional counseling, but I got to tell you, I don't know if any of that professional counseling did as much as it did, much as the pastor's counseling did. Mm. The pastor's counseling changed our whole family dynamic and gave us another, nearly another 40 years with him before he passed away. So this one's personal for you. It's real Perfect. personal. This movie's Perfect. personal. Yeah, we're, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It makes it even more powerful knowing that. And I hope anybody that goes to see this, that hears this, that goes to see it, knows that. The, the, this yeah. one's special for you. Um, yeah. When, when it... <sighs> I, I think the, as you were talking, I was just thinking about how, if, again, I've never served and maybe one of the regrets in my life, you know, that, that because I have so much admiration and respect for those that have, um, you know, I, I have to think that there's a level of, and I think TC did a great job in the film in this, it, there's a level of self-reliance and um, because of the leadership structure within, as I understand it, within the military of pulling your bootstraps up, doing your thing. I'm going to get through this. I'm going to power my way through this because, right. And, and, and maybe I'm wrong, but I, I feel like TC did a really good job of embracing the fact that that's got to be, you said it, I think a minute ago, that's got to be the hardest part is reaching out to somebody. In this case, it was uh, Keisha and her role, which was fantastic. Yes. Reaching out and saying, I need some help. Um, yeah, yeah. And I don't think in the military, man, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't no, think in the military, no. there's an, there's a space for someone to say, I need some help. It's, it's do better, yeah. get better, be strong, yeah. be tough. It's, be, it's be not all just those. the PTSD. Mm -hmm. Look, I, <laughs> me and my buddies, I, uh, one of my platoon leading buddies came to my house a few weeks ago and we sit on my back porch 
and we were laughing about our, all our aches and pains now and then how sillier for better or worse stupid we were back then being young knowing that you know, i got a broke foot but i'm not going to the doctor there you go. So yeah. I know I have a broke foot. You know, I got a broke finger. I'm not going to the doctor. Don't need it. So we did that stuff because in those leadership roles, you want to always project this image of, hey, I, I got, you know, when you're a platoon leader, you have 40 men that or women that you're responsible for. Yeah. And you 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 grow these relationships with these soldiers, these Marines, whatever. And you just feel like nobody can take care of them better than you. Mm, so you right. never want to be away from them. Right. And um, uh, to the point where I miss my first son's birth mm. because I, and my colonel gave me the option. He said, okay, man, you can you know, go up to the, the, the DMZ border with your company because it's your turn to rotate up there. Or you go home and have a, you know, see the birth of your first child. That shouldn't even that shouldn't have been a question in any right. other career field. Right. But all I could think about was, man, what if one of my men died up there while I was away? Mm -hmm. I, I just and then on the other side, I was thinking, well, what if what happens? What if something happens to my wife or my baby I'm away from there? Yeah. But my wife, being uh, a former military person herself, understood that and said, no, you you you're the company commander. You need mm. to be with your men. Yeah. And I didn't see my firstborn until he was about six, almost eight weeks old. Yeah. So, it, so it's hard to take people in those strong, those leadership positions in the military and things like that and, and pull them away to do something for themselves. Mm -hmm. It really is because the tendency is, no, I have to take care of these people that I'm responsible for. So no yeah. matter what, regardless of the cost, my job is to take care of them. And it, and unfortunately, that carries over to what we see in with you know with PTSD taking that first step, that type of thing. Uh, but it is it's it's a remarkable thing that happens, um, yeah. And and I still live with it. I mm -hmm. mean, I I still have young men. My some of my uh, son's friends still come by here just to hang out with me, and I'll go. No, can't go here tonight. I got these young cats coming over. Yeah. So that I can just sit and talk to them and yeah. whatever they want to talk about. Hey, what do you want to talk about? But I feel like now it's my responsibility to help try to mentor and help educate them. Yeah. So it, it never leaves you. We get upset when our Starbucks isn't right. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, and, and I, 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 that's a quote I give, I give quite often from a song that says, you better take your so-called problems and put them in quotations because I, you know, I think most people get upset if their Starbucks order isn't right or if their Chipotle didn't come out fast enough. And that's what you all are dealing with. And you serve our country and give us a freedom that we don't even understand uh, and we take full advantage of. So as you were speaking, that's all I could think of was, you know, we get upset about the smallest of things when we don't even realize what you all um, are, are dealing with when you come home. And, and I think what you said, too, is powerful. It reminds me of um, uh, Gregory's role as pop it, it, with his coffee shop, sitting down and talking to TC when he came back and, and just leaving that door open. So he could, you know, he could have an Avenue and a place to speak. Yeah. A, a place to come. Yes. And that was pop's character. Yes. Pop's character was that guy who's, who's left the military years ago, but his door is always open. Mm. Yeah. Always open. I wish those places existed. I, and I hope they do. I, I, I don't know. I'm off the top of my head. And if I did, I'd highlight them right here because I think they, they're needed, you know? Oh, yeah, I think, absolutely. I agree. I think it goes back to your point about the church. I think the church can be one of those places. Yeah. Um, the church, the, the the church, the whole church, not just any particular yeah. church. Yeah, um, but if anybody's hearing this, I think hopefully you take away one, go see the film. That's the biggest reason why we're talking today. But hopefully they've heard a, a story behind the film because it brings it to a new perspective. I think yeah. if I'd have had this conversation with you and then seen the film, I would have seen it through different eyes. Um, I was just viewing a film, you know, and right. and um, and even then it affected me. It, it impacted me. And uh, especially the end. I don't want to give away the, the end. You got to go see it. So <laughs> okay, go see the end. Go see right, go see. That and I'm dying to come sit in your porch because I think we could probably talk for a long oh, time. Oh man, we'll talk all day. <laughs> <laughs> my wife, my wife calls down and goes, "Send those dudes home. It's bedtime. You know, I want to go to sleep." But 
it's hard, man. I did. I'm right before you. I mean, minutes before you called in, or I called in to you, um, young guy that we we grew up from the time he was maybe eight nine years old. He lived in our first neighborhood. He, I mean, we've had him around our family the whole time. My sons call him their big brother. Mm. And um, he's a family man now with wife and two kids himself. And he called me just right before I died and said, hey, I'm in town. Can we get together tonight? Like, absolutely. Come on over about 630. So I, I love that. So yeah. I, I love being able to be that guy that these young people grow up and they move on. But when they come back in town, they still want to come sit and talk to you. Yeah. And, and, uh, and I just always, you know, make the time for that. And so, but yeah. Well, Major Mans, you 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 have left your mark, um, and I'm, I know that's going to continue on, um, not only through this film but the other films that you've mentioned, uh, through those phone calls. You know, film films are awesome, and I hope everybody goes to see this one. But I'm telling you that that moments on your porch. I know your son called you when we were just before we clicked record. Moments yeah. with your son. You know, yeah. those those leave as much of a mark as any film will ever leave. Um, because those are lasting things that you're doing and, um, you know, your experience and sharing and listening and being that person for people. I don't need to tell you this. I'm sure you already know it, but uh, yeah. from some guy that just met you today, thank you for doing that I as well. Um, I do. I hope people, when they do go see the movie too, they see the power and the strength mm -hmm. of a military non-commissioned officer. Yes. Because this, you know, this movie is being told from an NCO's point of view not an officer's point of view, but an NCO's point of view. And, um, and I was very careful to make sure that I did that. I didn't want anybody in the film being an officer. Mm -hmm. So that's why Pops is a former NCO. I wanted that when he and TC's character talked to each other, I wanted to be that NCO to NCO feel uh, because I, I started my career enlisted before I became an officer. And I always like to tell people that I've had the two hardest jobs in the world. And that's how I phrase it to folks. And I always say being, a, being an infantry officer is the second hardest job in the world, that, if you think about it. And, and people were often go, well, why? So because when bullets start flying and things start blowing up all around you, the infantry officer is the guy who gives the order to say, all right, we have to go over there where all that stuff is happening and, and take out that enemy. Mm. The hardest job is the infantry NCO because he has to take those men over there and do it. Yeah. And I have all the respect in the world for NCOs in the military, I, being an officer, I, but there's no harder job. And I argue that with anyone. I said, okay, name, give me a job. I argue you all day that yeah. if, if you think your job is harder than taking nine men into an area where everybody's shooting at you, then I'll sit and argue with you all day. I can't think of a harder job. And I wanted that strong NCO presence to come out in this film. You know, you see the struggle, but you see the pride in TC's character as well as being this powerful NCO. So I hope that all of my NCO friends and all the NCOs that are in the, in the service today, if they go see this, they see themselves that, you know, the, who they are. They are the heart of our military. Yeah. And you just can't do without it. And his pain. His pain. You know, that, his pain in losing again a spoiler alert but his pain in losing some of his guys was right. was our pain in watching the film um and again tc was fantastic in in bringing us into that that moment you know uh as well as every everyone involved in the film but tc obviously played the role but um i think telling the story and his pain of of yeah. those are his guys that's his team. i just love the way keisha just drew into that pain yeah immediately and tried to step in uh there were times when tc and keisha would do scenes in this movie and afterwards i would walk up to them and go man i sure didn't write it that good yeah <laughs> great wow yeah, because the two of them i mean keisha is just an but she's been in the game for a long time she's an yeah. incredible performer yeah and seeing her in this movie is a little different than some of the stuff we've seen her in before but man, she just embodied that role, didn't she? She just, she just came in there and you know, you you were rooting for her to win mm -hmm. because you knew if she did, what the outcome would be for him. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, man, uh, yeah, I could talk about that cast all day. They yeah, 
As well, you should. As well, you should. They uh, and, and so we'll talk about it on your back porch sometime if I come through. Atlanta. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so, no, this, this has been fantastic. So uh, I want to make sure I get all your links before we close out. I know we've yep. already talked about it. So there's um, M M B K yep. film. Uh, yeah, MBK, uh, Mike Bravo Kilo, Mike, my brother's keeper, mbkfilm.com is the Got web. It. Uh, and then, or if not, they can just go to Mans, M A N N S, Mackie, M A C K I E, studios.com, all. And we also have the link back to the site there. So they can. Okay. Any other places or any other things that, and I know the tra the trailer is probably on one of those two sites, if not both. Trailers on those two sites, uh, they're you know, on my social media, uh, which you can find me, Ty Mans across all the social media boards, T Y Mans across all the social media boards. But yeah, Twitter they can find all that good stuff. Yeah. And we have some new trailers coming. We just turned the new trailers in yesterday. Okay. So we got some new trailers coming. And uh, yeah, I mean, thanks. I mean, this is great. I, we just pray that people will go out and be not only entertained, but touched by this movie. We need it. You know, we, we need films to come back and we need them to come back strong. We need distractions and especially distractions that, that, that are worthy of our time. And, and this is worthy of our time. This is a distraction that we all need to be aware of. Um, yeah, yeah. Amidst our own, again, so-called problems in quotations uh, with, with COVID and vaccines and, being disrupted a little bit we we need to understand and keep that in perspective because there's there's a lot bigger things that some people are it walking is. around and dealing it with is. it is and you know i was very careful and i wanted to be very careful because and you know not knowing it then when i wrote it but the environment that we are in with the COVIDs and all that this that this is film is not an indictment on anyone it's not an indictment on the military it's not mm -hmm. an indictment on the service members because we all put that uniform on, we raise our right hand and we volunteer. It's just, it's just a story about someone that's suffering through something after serving this country. Yeah. So I don't want people to feel like, oh, you're trying to say the army did this. No, it's not, it's not an indictment on anyone. Uh, yeah. I love the army. I love my military career. The best thing that could have happened to me, I would do every second all over again if I, if I could. Uh, but it's just, I just want to tell this story that what happens and you know, what happened to my dad mm. when he came home. Well, I believe you've honored him and you've honored his story. Um, you've honored, I didn't feel at any point that there was anything other than a story. And, you know, maybe it's not PTSD, maybe somebody wasn't in the military, but either way, we need to talk. We need to, and the church is no better place because there's not a lot of, uh, red tape, so to speak, that we have to cut through. We can just go straight to a pastor and sit down and, and they've been called uh, to that ministry and they, they, they will uh, help us find hopefully, you know, what we're looking for. And I think we all know what that is, you know, ultimately, but we got to get there and we got to have the conversation no matter what the issue is. But man, I'm, I'm so thankful that you brought this to light and that uh, I, I'm praying over this film. I hope it just does incredible things. Um, and so people can go to the site and yep. and click on that and get awareness of what theaters it may be in is it going to be on any other because i know some of the streaming now they're going to showtime and hbo whatever is it going to be on any other platforms or theaters only yeah um no it's it, it, it's going to come out in theaters and of course how long it stay in theaters depends on of course the people going to see it yeah and that's with any movie and regardless in any environment but yes they are working right now to, for the streaming platforms uh, the DVDs, all that's being worked right now. I even think a couple of the, the cable networks have already started chiming in. So it will make its way through the whole system. Uh, and a lot of that will depend on how long it actually stayed in theaters. So, Well, anybody listening to my voice, you know, let's support films that are making a difference. Uh, we're going to come out of this COVID and we're going to come out of this and we're going to get back to theaters one day. And this is a good chance to get out and get, get behind something that really means it's powerful. Um, get behind people doing great work, uh, you know, like yourself. And so anybody listening to this, please go to that website, check the film out, watch the trailer, hopefully some new trailers soon as well. And uh, just get behind my guy here. He, he's really poured his heart into this. This one's personal. And uh, for that, you know, I, I appreciate what you've done. It, it's awesome. And I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you being on, not only for your service, not only for the film, all the reasons we've mentioned, uh, just a ton of respect for you, sir. 
No, thanks for having me. You know, I, believe me, I appreciate this a lot. I know you guys are busy, but just to come on and talk about words I wrote on a piece of paper. <laughs> yeah. I'm very, very grateful and thankful to God that these things are happening right now. So thank you so much. You Absolutely. As soon as I get down to Georgia again, I'm going to sit on your back porch. We're going to talk some more. So. Yeah, yeah. Hey, look, I'll be, if I get, I'm supposed to come to, we were supposed to have our uh, RTC reunion in Dayton this past year. But of course, COVID stopped that. So yeah. the guys are actually planning that now for later in the year. So if I ever get, if we get back up there, I'll look you up. Hey, we'll find I'm, I'm about an hour later. from Dayton. You, you get back into Ohio, you let me know. I'll come find I you. Will. I Absolutely. Will. So Absolutely. thank you so much. Thank you for your service. Thank you for this film. And thank you for your time today. All right. Thank you, though. Take care. I appreciate you.